and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name's Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So before I start, I'd like to say a big thank you to Joanne for your PayPal gift. Thank you. Thank you very much. And also say thank you to Kara. Only gone and painted me a picture. Painted a picture for me. Blimey. So um thank you. I haven't I've not received it yet, so it's but when I do receive it I will talk about it. But that was it's got a picture of Vinny and Andre. It's uh Yeah, wow. So, 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 so what's happening? What's happening, man? Oh, uh, wow, the amount of apps I've got open on my phone. I'm going to close them all. There's about 50 apps open. Wow, now my, now that explains why everything's going so slowly. If the if the data is being used for all of those apps, blimey, there's stuff that I've not used for months. There must be a way of getting rid of this. Oh, I'm all gone. All gone. Surely, just close, turn the phone off. That should be enough, isn't it? So, um, how many days have I done this? I've been quite good. Been quite good, haven't I? I've done quite a few days in a row now. Let's have a look. Sign in. By the way, I have deleted the Deep Sleep Whisper podcast, Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast, the one with the music on the background and stuff, because it wasn't updating with Apple Podcasts, and I was getting like 20 20 plays a day, and it just wasn't, just, there was no point in having it, so I got rid of it. I don't know what the issue was. I tried it multiple times to fix it, but something there was a there was an issue, and I don't know what it was. I even end up t- t- deleting loads of stuff in the hope that I could then add, but no. Very very weird, very weird. So there's only the two main podcasts, which is the Let Me Boys Sleep and the other one. So. I'm just looking at how many I've done in a, in a row now. So I did one yesterday, which was the first of May. I uh, did one 30th of April, 29th of April, 20 oh 28th of April, 27th of April. 26th of April, 25th of April, 25th of April. That's a bit weird. There's no date on that one. I don't know when that was. No date on it. So it was the 1101, 25th, maybe 24th. Yeah, blimey. So 25th, 26th, 25th, 24th. I don't know. Twenty. Oh no, it was a twenty-third. That was a twenty-third. I've got the date on one of them. Twenty-third. Go back. 
so okay so that wasn't so if I go to so the 25th so 25th 6 7 8 9 10 11 first and a second so it's the eighth recording in a row wow okay all together now there's a hero if you look inside your phone yep it's me that's not bad then he's on the floor jumping on a, on a bone just had something to eat it's been out a few times today three times yeah three times he's been out the first two times he was running around with doggies the first time there was about four dogs all together all running around second time he ran around with one dog and the third time we just went to the petrol station to get some milk <sighs> I needed some milk I'm running out of food well run out of milk so I, I bought some <laughs> bought some milk it really is kind of that's that basically that really not the most interesting story I've ever told but you know, not the not the most boring either to be honest let's see what the local news is every day I'll check the news just in case there's something just you know how by our for so we got off oh we've got a forecast for heavy rain and thunder storms is that tonight hmm. all right what's this Ah. Is a hero if you look inside your heart. Again, this silly website. It just, I mean, account details. It's got me. It's got my deed. I'm, I'm, I'm actually logged in, right? But it still won't let me see the story, and I'm logged in. So subscribe. So if I click subscribe, what happens then? Subscribe. Stay connected. Stay informed. Five pound for five months, and then renews at four pound ninety nine a month. That's the digital pack, whatever that means. The web only three ninety nine a month. So even though the, before they sort of said, well, they'd block it and say, well, you can, you if you want to see the information, then you can join, make an account, you know, give your email address and stuff, which is what I did. Now that's not enough. I mean, what's next? Blood samples donating a kidney I mean I don't know what, 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 what more do they want uh, there's a there's a way around it though because all I do this is what I do is I f copy the headline and I just go to a different website in fact I know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this See what's the news on there. Put it into AI and it should come up. Something should come up. For oh, okay, that wasn't really that useful, but it's okay if I use the copilot. So this is Bing Copilot. Let's see if this will come up with some information. 
Okay, come on. Searching. Okay, yeah, it's coming up. So all the information is now coming up on Bing Copilot. So I actually have to go to not just the search engine, but to the AI search engine in order to find out what's on a website that should be for the public to see. Now, I thought... I thought the websites of newspapers was a public service, especially like local websites, local news for local people. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson told he has just three rounds to beat Jake Paul. Oh, okay, look at this. Netflix is removing all these movies and TV shows. This is on uh, The Independent. Netflix removes a large amount of titles each month without warning. I didn't know that. Or did I know that? I might have known that. And May 2024 is no different. Huh. It's, it's basically an advert for Netflix, isn't it, really? To get people to watch shows before they get taken off, I guess. Over the next 31 days, many movies and TV shows will not only be added to the service, but will disappear altogether. Or I should read it. But will be disappear altogether. Now we need a lot of people just saying, it will disappear. Uh, meaning titles will vanish from your watch list before you had the chance to watch them. Fortunately, the independent has put together a list of every single thing, including some Netflix originals that will be cold in the coming month. From high profile films to little scene shows, there's every title. Here's every title being removed in 2024 May NB what does NB stand for we compiled this list with assistance from what's on Netflix with assistance so basically they copied and pasted is that what they did let's have a look okay, let's have a look say what's on what's on Netflix so basically <laughs> <laughs> oh dear oh dear it's just a list of everything that's leaving in May there's a big long list and by the day it's, that's all they've done is copy and pasted they've copied it and pasted it into their new newspaper website and what do they say uh, we compiled this list with assistance from what's on Netflix you copied and pasted assistance maybe oh no Jenna Ortega surprises fans by leaving hit Netflix series Wednesday I guess that's the only one I think she's in on Netflix well I'm not watching it she's not on it so there continue reading okay Austin. In fact, I'm not even going to look at the newspaper. I'm just going to go on to Netflix. What's on Netflix? 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Ben Gzar, Benghazi. Austin Land, Awakening, 1990. That was a movie. That's Robert De Niro and Robin Williams, I do believe. Baby Geniuses, don't know that one. Barbie Dream House Adventure. No! Three seasons and they're getting rid of it. No! That's the 1st of May. It's gone. It's the second. No! <laughs> Coach Carter, The Core. The Core? That was some, some movie, isn't it? Is a scrimpen. E Einsatz Kruppen. The, the Nazi health uh, death squads. 
Uh, Gods of Egypt, Heat, Knuckle, Kung Fu Panda 3. Mm, I'm surprised about that because Kung Fu Panda movies are very popular, aren't they? Munafic 2, Moonich, Octonauts, Primal Fear. Octonauts, don't know what that is. Sinister, The Skeleton Key. The Story of Film, Sun Cry Moon, Sir Sapata, The Wall, Climb for Gold, 23 Walks, Bennett's War, Boys Over Flowers, Colony, Three Seasons, Harry Enfield's Television Programs, Two Seasons, Iris, Lady Driver, Medic, Medici, Medic, Roped, The Stand at Paxton County, Chris DiStefano, Despicable Me 3, The Salvineer, The Football Factory, Resident Evil, Resident Evil, Resident Evil, Resident So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 3 Resident Evil movies. I want to watch them now. They leave on the 5th. I've only got 3 days. Oh. Daughters of Reminiscence, City of God, Ten Years Later. Have you seen The Fireflies? Taskmaster, Six Seasons. Didn't even know it was on there. Wow. Uh, every headline, What's Leaving Netflix UK on May the 10th, 2024? What's Leaving Netflix UK on May the 11th, 2024? What's leaving Netflix UK on May the 12th, 2024? See, we say the 10th. I think in other parts of the country, the world rather, the, they say May 10. We don't say that. They never say that. May 11, May 5, April 4. We would say May the 10th or the 10th of May. You know, one of those. It's definitely got a T and an H in it. So it's a weird, lots of those little idios idiosyncrasies, isn't there, between us? The defected, Arhan. I wonder if that's uh, is is that about Aha? Hunting high and low. Ooh, da -da 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 -da. Hunting high and low. <laughs> Big Mama's house. Big Mum's house. Big Mama's like father, like son. Wow, 11 years between them two. Fantastic Mr. Fox. That's leaving. I like that film. It's good. I didn't think I would because it looked, well, it just looked rubbish. Um, but it's really good. It's weird. I don't know. Just not it looked right, but just because the I'm not a big fan of that kind of animation. I think it's is it called stop start animation or something. It's just it. Maybe I got it wrong, but it's yeah. Didn't really. I think when it comes to animation, I'm a bit more probably prefer like Toy Story animation or Shrek. Or the snow, not a snow queen. Let it snow, let it snow. Do 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 do. The snow never bothered me anyway. I remember singing that. I was at this. Uh, it was a mind, like you know, mind the mental health charity. It was at one of their days. It's like a, a regular Friday lunchtime group. And uh, when well, you might think, well, why was I singing that song? But forget that for a minute. One of the blokes there got really angry. I don't like that song. So? It made me want to sing it even more. Is, is that wrong? I followed them all the way home. Let it snow, let it snow, dancing around him. 
the snow will never bother me anyway. And he said, it's the cold that never bothered me anyway. It's not the snow. I said, see, you like it, really. I don't. Inglorious Bastards. Never watched it. Never watched it. I don't know. It just never, never could get past a certain part of it without, you know. Fifty Shades of Grey. Never watched it. At least not with a sound up. <laughs> no, I never watched it. Uh, it wasn't really aimed at me, to be honest. Penguins of Madagascar. Nope. Shark Tale. I did see. I did see Shark Tale. Turbo. Don't. Not sure if I saw that. The Bridge. The CEO. The Figurine. Phone Swap. The Producers. One season. Nope. Uncontrollable Fond. Amy Tan. Octonauts. <sighs> to be honest, a lot of stuff on here I've never even heard of. Uh, maybe if they promoted it. I, I've i said in the past, and I think I, I really believed it at some time, that once it's on Netflix, it stays there forever, but clearly not. Sing to Little Women, Belfast, Malignant, the unbearable, the unbearable weight of massive talent. The day I lost my shadow. Make mermaids. What are you going to miss on UK Netflix UK May two thousand twenty four? Let us know in the comments below. So let's see who's left comments. So this was posted, this was posted April the 18th, okay? Um, so this is a website, that The Independent, which is a really large newspaper in the UK. This was posted on April the 18th, 2024. And they're using this as a source because it's clearly a very popular website. And... There's one comment, literally just one comment. Ellie, the 8th of April, which is weird because it was posted on the 19th. It's posted on the 18th of April, but she put a comment on the 8th of April. That doesn't make sense. How does that work? So Ellie says, boys over flowers. It may be a bit dated, but it was the start of the Helua wave and lesson one in the story of Li Min Ho and his domination of drama. Watching the taming of Gu Jun Pio is essential viewing. I don't even remember that one's being mentioned. It's written by Jacob Robinson. Jacob joined Watts on Netflix in 2018 as a full-time writer, having worked in numerous other industries until that point. Jacob covers all things Netflix, whether that's TV or movies, but specialises in covering new anime, anime and K-dramas, residing in Norwich in the United Kingdom. Huh. So... I don't know. Coming soon. Let's see what's coming soon to Netflix. I don't understand why Netflix in America and Netflix in the UK is different. Why? Doesn't need to be anymore, does it? I mean, there was a time, terrestrial TV, we would be well behind America with shows like Cheers, Likes, uh, Friends or whatever. We're so behind. Uh, so, so much so that often the Christmas special episode of the sitcoms whether it was Roseanne or or Golden Girls or 
I don't know. I'm just trying to think. Mash or whatever the 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 show was. Seinfeld. The Christmas show would be on in the summer here. And it used to. I remember thinking, why is the Christmas show on in the summer? And I remember asking my dad. I said, Dad, why is? It's the summer, isn't it? He said, Yeah, it's July. I said, Well, why is the Christmas episode of the Golden Girls? He said, That's Roseanne. I say, Roseanne, sorry, Roseanne. He said, I like wrote Golden Girls as well, but it's just a different show. I'm just not being pedantic. I said, It's a little bit pedantic, but that's fine. He said, Look, Jason, you'll find it. You really find actually he didn't say he said son because he doesn't know my name. He says son, you you'll find that maybe sometimes it's difficult to be honest, especially if you get into a relationship. But honesty really does it. It's the best policy. And he stole my Mars bar. So that was a weird conversation. But I said, look, Dad, Dad, wait, but why? 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 Why is it on? Why is it on in the summer? Why can't it be on in the winter, in Christmas? Because, because you know, for me, I've been a fan of American sitcoms and American shows. I was brought up on them. Late 70s, you know, most of the best shows that I remember were American. Starsky and Hutch. In fact, let's have a little look. Come on. Let's have a look. Best USA TV shows. 70s. Now, I was a little kid. Some of them I didn't get to see. I don't want the eight hundred and sixty. Yeah, that's it. One hundred and sixty best shows ranked. Who do who they think they are to rank it? They're putting down number one, Happy Days. Really? Um, is this family shows best TV shows of the seventies? I wouldn't put a fan. I mean, I watched Happy Days, but I wouldn't put it down as the best show. But I did love it. So, yeah, Happy Days. So, I used to watch that. That started in 74. So, I was four years, no, I was three years old when that started. I watched it in the late 70s, like, I guess, 77, 78, or whatever. All in the family. I don't remember watching that. At all, I don't remember that one. Uh, Mash went on f- eleven seasons, so seventy-two to eighty-three. Here's a thing, right? And it's really weird, but I remember this. When I, I got my first television, when I was about fourteen. Maybe 13, 14. I had a TV for over a year before the family disintegrated. And maybe a year and a half, maybe two years even. No, I don't know. Probably 13, maybe. And it was an old, it was a black and white. Oh, it was, wasn't a new black and white. It was quite an old black and white TV. Had it at the bottom of my bed. And it was probably the best thing I ever had. Now, ironically, I could have just bought myself a TV. I had multiple jobs. TVs weren't expect well, they weren't cheap, but I could have just bought myself a TV. I don't know why I never just thought about doing it. But I don't think I was allowed. I don't think we was allowed to have TVs. Um, I don't know. I can't remember. But it's it's... It was so good because I no longer had to go downstairs to watch telly and I could watch the programs I wanted to watch. And also, I'd go to bed. I'd start going to bed early. So, oh, I'm tired. I'd go to bed. It's like, 
you'll be having had your breakfast shit <laughs> you gotta go you gotta go to school I was like oh okay but I just I just had to get upstairs and watch television with the lights off on my own it was brilliant and I discovered programs I'd never seen before because I was never no one watched them downstairs and also I was watching programs or on later that I wasn't allowed to because my bedtime would be like nine o'clock or something so I'm, I'm guessing I can't remember to be honest with you so I'd go to bed so I'd miss a lot of the programs that were on later that were more for adults and Cheers was one of those programs that it was either on late I think nine o'clock I think it was on on a I guess a Friday I know it was definitely on a Friday in the late 80s but this is like 83 1984 and there's two shows I remember watching there was Cheers and MASH and I loved them equally it's weird because I still I can still I can see why I love Cheers but I don't know why I love MASH because I, I see it now and I'm like I don't know why I like that I don't really understand why I enjoyed watching it but I did I really did, I loved it um, I watched it for years until you know the final well actually I watched it for probably one year but they were showing repeats I just realised it ended probably before it probably ended before I started watching it, but they were showing me Pete's. Um, yeah, it ended in 83. So yeah, it might have, it might have even been that they were, sh they were re-showing the whole thing and showing it every night on BBC Two or something. And maybe that's why I liked it, because I was watching it every night and I kind of got a bit hooked to it. But, yeah I really loved that and Cheers as well that was the other one that I just loved watching it was there was something special about having my own TV in my bedroom it just I'd never had it before never never it was just amazing so what's number four the Carol Burnett show I do not remember that don't know if it was on TV here or not. Number five, I used to love this show, The Rockford Files. The Rockford Files. Oh man, 1974 that started. Now again, I remember watching it, but I don't know how much of what I was watching was just repeats. But I loved it. Yeah, I love the Rockford Files because he was so cool. Such a cool dude. Jim Rockford. Jim. I used to call him Jimmy. And his dad, he, he didn't used to call him dad, did he? He used to call him something. I uh, forget his name, but he used to have a name for him, like Rock or something. Okay, what's next? WKRP. In Cincinnati. Uh, nope. I know I can see some of the people recognise Lonnie Lonnie Anderson. Um, nope. So I don't never heard of that one before. Sanford and Son. Now, for those that don't realise, people that were big fans of Sanford and Son, it's got Red Fox in, who I do know, because he's a very famous stand-up comedian. Uh, he in fact you could say he's someone that Richard Pryor was uh, a fan of before Richard Pryor got into comedy he was a big fan of Red Fox and the naughty comedy that he did well anyway Stanford the Sun was a copy of a British comedy called Stepso and Son 
and it's uh, a rag and bone man and it was Harold and his dad Harold was the young bloke and his dad was the old bloke and they both lived in this big yard full of rubbish basically and that's what they do they just collect rubbish on a horse the back of a horse and cart and that started in I think it was in the 60s that was on because it was black and white to start with and then they they had it as colour and one of the it's like you you dirty old man you dirty old man it's like Harold Harold you dirty old man you don't know what you've done well okay it's not very good but it, it if you'd never heard if you'd never heard them speak before that was really good that was a really good impression if you do know step so and son and you've seen it then i apologize mary tyler moore show now i know that that was huge in america I don't know whether it was ever on TV here. I don't know. I might have been a fan of it. I just, I genuinely don't know. 1970 it started. I was, that's the, day, the year I was born. Right, next is Columbo. Columbo. I love Columbo. That used to be on, on Sunday afternoons here. And they made loads of them, didn't they? Started in 1971. I don't know when it finished, but... I think it was it was around for a long time and yeah what should I do my impression of Columbo okay ma'am okay okay goodbye well, well just, 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 well, just one thing ma'am uh, uh, was it you did you do it <laughs> okay maybe that wasn't such a good impression oh this is another one I loved it was a comedy taxi 1978 I used to watch Taxi loved Taxi it was just brilliant I'd watch it now that's one of the shows right out of all the shows that I've looked at if they showed them on TV now I would watch Happy Days out of interest I was, I'd watch the ones that I'd not seen before just to see what they looked like not MASH because I don't know for some reason it just doesn't do it anymore Rockwood Files probably not so much because I've seen that that has been on TV Stanford and Son I've watched a few episodes on YouTube so not so much bothered Mary Tyler Moore show out of interest I'd have a look at that Columbo I've seen them all I think but Taxi so I'd watch Happy Days I'd definitely watch Taxi if I'd watch every episode from one right through the end because it was a great show and Danny DeVito <laughs> it's just so funny he was an awful 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 man in that show the Scooby Doo show of course I watched that as a kid so the six million dollar man so these are all American shows um, all American shows and I know most of them bearing in mind that we did produce our own shows in this country as well but the six million dollar man yeah of course i'll watch that love that three's company no never heard of, well i've heard of it but i've never never saw that uh i don't think i know who john ritter is um rest in peace he he was in um hooper man was it hooper man love that show that was in the either I think late eighties, I think maybe early nineties. Right. So then there's the Muppet Show. Also, John Ritter played an android in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. See how about that for a bit of trivia? The Muppet Show, nineteen seventy four onwards. That was Saturday night viewing. That was peak viewing in the UK. I mean, you'd have stuff like early evening. We haven't come to those shows yet, but early evening. I mean, you probably have happy days would be on like five o'clock. 
but then you'd get to six million dollar man in my memory it always used to be on midweek like maybe a Tuesday or a Thursday the Muppet show would be on a Saturday night I think possibly Sunday night but I think it was Saturday night around um, six o'clock maybe seven but before that before that the Dukes of Hazard. Oh yes, the Dukes of Hazard, and then possibly the A Team. So they'd be back to back, phenomenal, amazing stuff. Or the Night Rider, the Night Rider, Night Rider. So Dukes of Hazard, the A Team, or Night Rider, Dukes of Hazard, Dukes of Dukes of Hazard. I remember being on quite early. Uh, Morecambe Mindy's another one that used to be on quite early used to be on around about a half five mark because uh, the evenings used to start quite early on a Saturday like the family evening entertainment and back then there was only three channels in the in the 70s in this country there was no cable there's no satellite or anything like that so the Dukes of Hazzard that's I mentioned that Bob Newhart show it's a great show I just, I just never got to see it here I've, uh, I used to have is it Bob Newhart that used to do the the bit being um, on a telephone having telephone conversations on because he did albums and doing stand up and he'd be having a conversation on the phone uh, I think it was Bob Newhart he used to have some albums of his in the past mind you most things were in the past What's next? Dukes of Hazard. So I've covered that. Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. I still to this day, right? Because you had Bo and you had Luke Duke. So Bo Duke, Luke Duke. Um one of them went on to be Superman's dad in Smallville. Hey, hey, remember that? Anyone? And they raced around uh, generally Daisy Luke. Yep, Daisy Luke. She was, uh, they were all very popular in their own way. And you got Boss Hog. And there was the, I forget his name, there was Deke, Deacon? Or D Deputy Deacon, and then there was another one. One that was quite a bit dippy, and then one was also dippy, but he was a bit more stern. And But one of them was saying, Rascal Peter Train, or something like that. And I could never understand what he was saying. Rus he does, so like the, 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 you know, the CB radio is like, Rascal Peter Train. I don't know. That was, I never understood what he said. The Jeffersons, no, nope, never saw that. Ah, no, nope, never saw that. Bonanza, blimey. See, this was 1959, but they were still showing this in the 80s in the UK. But they used to show it on a Sunday, like Sunday morning. So I used to watch it. It used to be on a Sunday morning. Because when this was out, when they were showing this, Michael Landon had already what did he do I know he did Highway to Heaven what did he do before Highway to Heaven Michael Landon oh Little House on the Prairie so he was in three absolutely massive television shows um, and he was a star of two of them like the main star, Lorne Green was a star of of uh, Bonanza, but Lorne Green, Michael Landon, oh, Little House on the Prairie in the early in the ooh, eighty six eighty seven time when I had my flat, my first flat, eighty seven. Little House on the Prairie used to be on on a Sunday morning. 
Wurzel Gummidge was on as well. That was a UK program, Wurzel Gummidge. But Little House on a Prairie was on, and I used to watch it. Do 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 do, do 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 do, do 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 do, whatever. And all the kids would be running down the field and toppling over and stuff. And was that was that Little House on a Prairie tune, or was that Last of the Summer Wine? One of them. Oh, Little House on the Prairie. This is weird. Little House on the Prairie. But it's got a picture of the bloke from... That's that's unusual. Because they've got a picture that isn't... It isn't the people from Little House on the Prairie. Based on Laura Ingalls Wilde's beloved book series, Charles Michael Landon, Caroline Karen Gressel, Mary, Laura Melissa Gilbert, Laura, who she was in Roseanne, wasn't she? Melissa Gilbert. So she was already a star, kind of, but she was a child star, and others, Jennifer. But there's a picture there, and it's the bloke with the beard that was in Highway to Heaven. I'm going to have to check this, I'm sorry. Highway to Heaven. Because I don't remember him being in Little House of the Prairie. I think they've made up a picture there. Victor French. His name is Victor French. Uh, He was in Little House on the Prairie. So why is there a picture of Little House on the Prairie but it doesn't have Michael Landon on there who is I think it's safe to say the star. Oh another show I used to watch and I think it was I remember they used to re-show it on Sundays in the late 80s or about 87 was oh Big Ben the, the the bear what was the bear? Ben Mountain Ben uh, Beardy Goldilocks Beardy Beardy Man with the Bear Oh What? Oh my god Wow He he passed away a year older than me in two years after I was watching him and oh, okay move away from now I don't watch that I liked him um, oh no have I lost the page I've got too many pages open best USA to oh, no damn you no oh yes I got it back whew Laverne and Shirley. Now, I don't remember. These are really famous shows that I remember the name of. Uh, The Odd Couple, Laverne and Shirley, uh, Mary Tyler Moore show. I remember the titles because they're part of, I don't know, part of um, history, like, you know, TV history like in America really big shows but I don't don't remember watching it it's apparently a spin off from Happy Days what do they do in Happy Days then anyway so the odd couple Barney Miller I used to watch Barney Miller it was a detective show wasn't it and it was a grumpy grumpy and yeah, Hugh. Okay, cool. I used to watch that. I think on reruns, we call them here. We call them uh, repeats in the UK because they're being repeated. Welcome, <laughs> welcome back, Cotter. Gabe Kaplan. I don't know. John Sylvester. Nope, I've never heard of that one. 
Uh, maybe I watched it, I don't know, but I've never heard of it. Huh. I don't think so. Starsky and Hutch. Wow. See, that was 1975. Did you know if you're in another country, if you're in the UK and you're over 40, you'd know about this. You might still know anyway, but you know, you'd remember it probably. Or over 50 or 70. So, Starsky and Hutch was on. I think that was. I'm pretty sure it used to be on a Saturday night, but late, like 10 o'clock. Because it was quite adult. Do, 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 do. No, that's no, a different one. And the tune I was just doing there was We Had Our Equivalent to Your Starsky and Hutch. Or to the American Starsky and Hutch, we had the professionals, which was two plain clothed detectives, and it was do 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 boom 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 wick 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 boom 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 wick 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 boom 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 wick 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 do 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 a car would drive like drive out of a building like a big glass building it was it was good i'm not sure i've sold it to you maybe i should tell you more it was good it was it was a similar like the uh i don't know um a close friendship it was gritty and you know funny and I didn't think they were anywhere similar though. This, I like Starsky and Hutch. I like the professionals. I didn't really see them as being the same kind of thing. Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels, I believe, used to be on midweek. And I love Charlie's Angels. And you know what? There was a one Charlie's Angels that I didn't like. I'm not talking about the shows, I'm talking about the different replacements they kept getting. Wasn't it Jacqueline Smith was the only one that stayed all the way through? And she was my favourite. I just always liked, even when I was a little kid, I just loved commitment. So, Wonder Woman. So, Wonder Woman used to be on a Saturday probably about six o'clock so again that would be around the same kind of time as maybe after Dukes of Hazard. so maybe during the year when uh, the A-Team wasn't on then maybe Wonder Woman would be on yep Mork and Mindy Mork and Mindy I used to love Mork and Mindy Mork and Mindy used to be on a Saturday night well Saturday late afternoon about 5 o'clock half 5 because sometimes I'd miss it getting home from the cinema uh, I remember one particular time I think I went to the to, went to see Superman 2 with my brother my, my oldest brother and it's quite a long all the Superman movies were quite long weren't they back two hours or whatever so we got home and missed Mork and Mindy. But it was okay, we were back in time to watch a six million dollar man. I remember saying to my brother, look, we missed Mork and Mindy. He said, yeah, but you got to see Superman too. I said, yeah, but I didn't get to see Mork and Mindy. But you got to see Mork, you got to see Superman too. What would you rather watch, Superman too or Mork and Mindy? I want to watch both. But you can't watch both. You, you know, we tried to get home in time, but it's, it's a fair walk. Um, if you hadn't needed to go to the toilet and you hadn't got all that popcorn stuck in your ears, uh, so, you know, we would have got back in time. But we missed Mork and Mindy. Keep repeating it. It doesn't make it change. It's just... But we missed, we missed it. I know. But you got to see Superman 2. That's, you asked me to take you to see it, and I did. 
Yeah, true. But I also asked you to get back in time to watch more Kamindi. But you can... I just... What, what, you can't just watch it when it comes back on telly. Well, it's not on telly next week, but it's a different episode. It's not the same. I'm not, I won't know what's happened. So I won't, I won't have that continuity. You know, same reason we didn't watch Superman 2 before watching Superman the first one. You know, they put, bring things out numerically. So Superman 3 will you know, be after Superman 2 so that people have watched the first and second one first and then they'll watch the third one. No one will want to watch the fourth one. But, you know, that's besides the point. It hasn't been made yet, but just generally, I imagine. Uh, so, how am I supposed to enjoy watching Mork and Mindy next Saturday when I don't know what happened this Saturday? Eh? Well, what can I do to help? Build a time machine and take us back? That'd be nice. That, that was the end of the conversation. He, to be fair, already walked off at that point. Um, the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, another one that was on midweek, I think, or maybe, oh, maybe that was on Saturday nights. Don't make me angry, was it? Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. The thing that I noticed with The Incredible Hulk and Kung Fu, which were two of my favourite programmes as a kid, is there's always that ending where they're basically hitching. They're walking on the side of the road, on their own, hitching for a lift. The Incredible Bill Bixby, you know, as uh, the little Hulk. And... Uh, Kung Fu, he was, I mean, admittedly, he wasn't hitchhiking because there was no cars in them days, but it's, you know, it's a similar kind of ending, slow, melancholy music as well. Uh, okay, what's here? Adam 12, I don't know, heard of that. Quincy, I've seen Quincy in the afternoons in the UK, but I've never. Never watched it when it was out, first of all. Uh, Hawaii Five O. Do 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 do. No, what is it? Do 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 if you don't know Hawaii Five O, and if you've never heard of it, because I know there is a new version of the show, but the original soundtrack for Hawaii Five O was amazing. No. <laughs> No. Oh, what was it? Bomba da bomba da bomba da bomb. Ow. Bomba da bomba da bomba da bomb. Ow. Do 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 do. There was waves. I'm trying to get into the tune by um, image imagining the waves. I keep going back to that tune. What's that from? That's Rocky, isn't it? Okay. Oh, I don't know. Hawaii Five-O, anyway. I used to watch that. 
I loved it. Honestly, loved Hawaii Five-O. It, I think it's because of the scenery. As a, you know, it was. If you if you're born if you if you lived in the UK, you know, let's say in England. I mean, it wasn't awful, but it's a very grey country. Like there's a lot of grey weather throughout the year, and it's sunny in the summer and stuff, and we have sunny sunny days as well in the winter and everything. But to see. Um, I'd never seen blue sea. I'd never seen tropical things really before, like on a regular basis. I'd seen movies and stuff like that, but Hawaii Five O was just beautiful scenery. Chips, wow! I forgot about chips. Love chips. That was a Saturday night viewing as well. So these are these are shows that I used to watch. The Love Boat, The Love Boat. I remember that one. The Love Boat, oh the Love Boat, the Love Boat, the Love Boat. Do 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 do. No, okay, I don't know. I I used to watch it anyway. I loved it. Was it Love Island? And a fantasy island as well. It's another one that I used to love. It's a very similar, very similar kind of thing, because I don't know. It's it's became. Well, I used to watch it. I used to like it. I dream of genie. Now it was too late. It was too. I mean, it's nineteen sixty-five. I used to watch it when I was a kid, and I used to have it on. I think BBC Two about. Six o'clock. If I got a chance, I'd watch it. It'd be one of those shows that would be on a bit like Star Trek, the original series. That'd be on like around six o'clock uh, in late seventies, maybe early eighties. Uh, other shows like Monkey. Oh, there's a few few different shows that they'd have on that were like really old, but I used to love watching them. Schoolhouse Rock. Nope, no idea what that is. Get Smart. I used to watch that when it was on, but I didn't... It wasn't on when I was on, but they used to show repeats, so I'd watch that. The Bionic Woman. Of course I watched it. Of course. Everybody in this country watched The Bionic Man, The Bionic Woman, Wonder Woman, Dukes of Hazard. It's... America, American TV really had a huge, a huge part of the TV viewing world for us. Um, I say for us, but for the, the TV schedule, if I could get, I might try and do that, get hold of a TV guide from 1978 or 1979 and just, just show you the TV shows that were on back then. Well, 1980. Uh, the Partridge Family. I don't remember watching that, to be honest. I don't remember it being on TV here. Saturday Night Live. No, we didn't have that here. Fantasy Island. Yes. Now, Saturday Night Live. If it was on, I never saw it. It might have been on late. I never saw it. Um, although we did do our own version Friday Night Live, I think it was. Or was did we do Saturday Night Live? I think it was Friday Night Live. And it was just basically trying to copy that one in the UK. That was quite popular. I think Jonathan Ross might have... No, it wasn't. It was Ben Elton hosted it. And there was a load of stand-up comedians and Halen Pace and Rick Mayall and a lot of the early alternative comedians were on there. Fantasy Island. Love Fantasy Island. That used to be Saturday night evening, early evening entertainment. 1978. I don't know how many shows they did. Good Times. Don't remember that one. Tom and Jerry Show. Yeah, I used to watch that. I'll tell you one that used to be prime time. There was the Muppets, of course. The Muppet Show. But something that used to be prime time was the Pink Panther. 
And I know if it, I don't know if it was Saturday or Sunday, but they used to show that. Oh, hear the hey, pink panther, pink panther, it is groovy. Groovy cat, it will be painful, the painful, it will be that his nose, he's the one and only truly be painful. It will be painful. Uh, the Waltons are, I never watched The Waltons when it first came out. I don't know how long it went on for. I mean, that was. It had a similarity to Little House on the Prairie, really, didn't it? Uh, kind of that. I mean, it was later in history. Little House on the Prairie, I think, was based earlier on in in American history. But the Waltons. I used to watch that on a Sunday morning. Nineteen eighty-seven used to be on a Sunday morning. I think it might have been on after Little House on the Prairie, and I used to watch it every every week. Just reruns, you know, or repeats. Hogan's Heroes. Don't remember seeing that. Soap. I. Oh man. I've gone well over time again. Um. You know what? Back in. Nineteen ninety. Probably about 1992, maybe 93. I had a phase where I was getting up early because I decided I just had enough of waking up and just going straight to work. So I thought, you know, I'm going to get up earlier and give myself a couple of hours before going to work to actually have some time so I'm not rushing about and you know, I'm not just starting my day putting stickers on bits of meat and whatever I used to do. So, I started waking up and getting up early, like five o'clock in the morning. So I used to start work at half seven. So I was getting up at maybe sometimes four, five. I'd be very tired by the end of the day, but it didn't matter. Because it doesn't matter what time you go to, if you get up early, you go to bed early. You know, it's not like you're going to be going to bed at midnight if you're getting up at four in the morning. So I was working till, I don't know, half four, half five. Half four? Half, I don't know. Anyway, there used to be these TV shows, and I think it was on Channel 4. Might have been on BBC 2. At this point, we had four channels. BBC 1, BBC 2, ITV... And Channel 4. Yeah. And then Channel 5 arrived in 97. So. So, 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 so. Let me tell you more. The. I came over some shows. at BBC 2 or Channel 4. I don't remember. And I came across a TV show that I'd never seen before. Called Soap. And I tell you what, I laughed more than I'd laughed for a long time when I was watching that. It was just one of the funniest things I'd ever seen. It's hard to explain it. It's, so I was sitting there, I think I was eating my breakfast or I just had my breakfast, having a cup of tea. And I was just absolutely... I had a black and white portable television. This is in the 90s. You know, colour TV's been around about 100 years by then. And it was just... I couldn't believe what I was... It was so funny. So funny. Now, I don't know whether or not soap was around in like Richard Mulligan it was because he used to be in another show I forget what it was but anyway so the I don't know if it was ever on any kind of peak time viewing in the UK like 77 when it came out it might have been on in the evening 
because it was I think quite adults that would have been on it later at night I never saw it but when I did see it I thought, wow I didn't even realise it was making fun of um, soaps I suppose I did a little bit because by then I'd watched quite a few soaps during the 80s and uh, yeah I'd seen a lot yeah I had so you know so I'm thinking I grew up watching Emmerdale even when I was in the kids home we used to crowd around the chairs around the television with the nuns and we would watch Crossroads I think and then there'd be time for bed unless it was Emmerdale Farm I think it was Crossroads but it's and then we had Dallas and Falcon's Crest and uh, Dynasty Dynasty and ooh, was there another one another American one oh I was just talking and he, he barked scared the hell out of me it was all quiet the chip van just turned up it sounds like metal scraping together there it's like a an ice cream van sound but almost like it's been made by the Terminator like, like that so he's heard it before I have and he started barking and it made me jump because I was really into what I was talking about I was really sort of interested in this boring conversation um, anyway <sighs> I forget what I was saying now. Damn you. I wouldn't mind if he if he like growled and then started barking, but just straight away. Like, oh it really made me jump. Um Yeah, so we had soaps here. So there was Emmerdale Farm, which then became it became Emmerdale. In the 80s, or 60s, 70s, 60s onwards, uh, maybe 50s onwards, I don't know, Coronation Street. And then EastEnders started in mid 80s, about 85. And then we had, we've now got a few others like Hollyoaks and different ones. And then the Australian ones came along. Now there's already, uh, yeah, what do we have? Uh, neighbours and then Home and Away huge hugely successful in the UK hugely successful like I don't even know how to tell you how successful they were it turned Jason Donovan but any of the main stars of those shows became famous and because most of them were young and good looking they ended up with uh, recording deals as well and it's so popular and some of them still are really really popular now even now 50 years later so but what there was a, there was other two other shows that I used to watch I think it was almost called Take the High Road and I think it was a Scottish um, Scottish soap opera But out of the Australian soaps, there was always uh, Prisoner Cell Block H. I used to like watching that. But the best one that I don't think got its credit due because it was on in the afternoons, so the general public, you know, that were working didn't get to see it. But it was, I f personally think, by far the best Australian soap I ever watched Sons and Daughters. It was in a different league. It was... They knew how to do a cliffhanger. They... Oh, Brookside. I forgot about Brookside. Brookside was a really big soap as well. Uh, it started in the 80s, early 80s. So, but... Okay. Sons and Daughters. I literally... It kept me going. I'd watch it in the afternoon. And I'd be hooked until the next afternoon to watch it again not knowing what's happened 
and very few shows got me like that it really like I got so into it it was great I mean I know that like Dallas had a obviously that was a huge one and like with JR and stuff but this they had okay it wasn't they were never that big in Home and Away not Home and Away in Sons and Daughters in a sense of you know it wasn't like a worldwide thing but they really knew how to do a cliffhanger and nowadays they'll try and do a cliffhanger in a TV show and then they'll give you a clip of next week and you know the person that was you had no stand stranded uh, in a desert on his own without any water the star and you see him sitting in a restaurant drinking tea and eating muffins it's like well he clearly got out of that so it wasn't it wasn't much of a cliffhanger really is it if you've just shown us that he's okay but then you know then there's the argument well if he wasn't okay there wouldn't be another episode would there it's like yeah but that's not the point the point is you know it's no but that is a point is this is number episode five of 12 what do you think is going to happen who do you think is going to star in the other amounts I have to work it out I haven't got my calculator on me who do you think is going to star in the others so he's like yeah but, that, but a cliffhanger is supposed to be like it's not okay it's not so much will he get out but how but you still don't know how he got out. You know that he ends up drinking tea and eating muffins, tickling a squirrel. But other than that, you don't know any more that. You don't know how he got out. Okay. Let's have a look. Have I got any messages? Nothing. No. So we've got, I've got a neighbour that goes down and gets his chips every day. His fish and chips every 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 week and it's a weird situation now because I have to have Vinny in here with the front door the, the living room door closed otherwise he barks at everything and now we've got new neighbours he's barking a lot and uh, it's a sh I kind of he likes to be in the bedroom sometimes and just chill it out on the bed Sometimes he likes to climb onto the windowsill and look outside as well. And I feel like... I like to have the door open. The reason... But you know why? Do you know why? Because I spent most of my adult life until I moved here living in one room. And I know, I guess I'm in one room and the bedroom's next door and the kitchen and the bathroom... But it's something nice about having the door open because it reminds me that I'm not in one room. When that door's closed, I feel like I am just back in one room again. And I don't know, it takes something out of being in a in a flat a little bit. And he wants to go into the other room. He wants to go into the hallway and shout at people through the door. Save me! Save! <laughs> he never feeds me! He hasn't fed me for three minutes! That's what he kind of things that he'd shout out. Anyway, so... Uh, soap. Oh, another one! Alice. Oh, I fell in love with Alice. Alice. Alice, Alice, Alice. She worked at Mel's Diner. I remember that even without even looking at it. And Mel was a bald bloke who was angry, always shouting. And I used to watch... Um, it used to be on in the evening, I think again on BBC Two, just reruns, repeats. I loved it. I just found it funny. It's I just, just like really, really liked it a lot. Okay, next is Kojak. Never got to see Kojak because it was on too late. It was adult and I wasn't allowed to watch it. I've seen it since on repeats, but they have not shown it so much. 
so I haven't seen many of them. The Beverly Hillbillies never saw that. I heard of it because it's famous, but I never saw it. Gunsmoke never saw that either, but that was very 1955. That's early, but I never saw that. Battlestar Galactica 1978. Yeah, that was huge, hugely popular over here. Yeah, love that. And then Sesame Street. But it was on every day. It was on every single day. You know, Monday to Friday. About 11 o'clock. Or whatever. In the, in the morning. Let's uh, do today. Going for another day. Do 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 do. Down at Fraggle Rock. Okay. Blimey no. It's the same. It's the same company that makes Fraggle Rock. Uh, Sesame Street. Uh, do do No, um, to Sesame. Welcome to Sesame Street. Do 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 Here we come. Down to Sesame Street. Oh, I can't remember Sesame Street. Welcome to Sesame Street. Anyway, I used to... I didn't watch it for me. But I did watch it with my little brother. I used to enjoy watching it. But it was basically... It was for little kids. It wasn't for... But weirdly enough, though, they had loads of famous people on there. Because it was the same company as made the Muppets, wasn't it? Uh, Hee Haw. Don't remember that. My Three Sons. Don't remember that. Different Strokes, wow, Different Strokes. That used to be on a Saturday evening. That was a hugely popular show here. What are you talking about, Willis? Uh, absolutely, he was a superstar. Gary Coleman, a superstar in this country. I think he was in America as well, but he was, yeah, Kung Fu. Again, Saturday night viewing Kung Fu. Love that. Absolutely love that TV show. I still do. I'll always love it. Um, and I think that all just, I wanted to be a Kung Fu master after watching that as well. That's kind of. Never achieved it though. Rowan and I used to I used to watch the Fall Guy and I wanted to be a a stunt man. So I was very influenced by what I watched. Imagine what I wanted to do once the internet became available. Stuff I was watching there. That's what I want to do for a living now. I'm sorry you're not big enough. Okay, fair enough. Benson, Benson, because he was in Soap playing the character Benson so it was yeah very sarcastic butler is that the right word butler uh, yeah he's a butler that was funny I used to like, like watching that uh, that used to be on in the evening in the week time so I remember watching that I watched that while I was eating my dinner uh, one day at a time no don't know that one Super Friends, nope. Dallas. Do I need to say anything about Dallas? Anyone that knows Dallas, you know Dallas. You don't need me to mention it. It was one of the most iconic TV shows of... That kind of... It, it spread through late 70s to 80s, even to 90s. I don't remember how, when it finished... And then it came back again as well, didn't it? But I remember watching it when it first came out, late 70s. And I remember in 1989, moving into a friend's flat, into a room in his flat, and watching Dallas on TV in that room on a black and white TV. Um, and it was... It had, oh, it had J.R. Ewing's son, a like grown-up son in it. And it was, 
who then went on to do a TV show, a sitcom, with Patrick Duffy, Bobby Yoon, in the 90s. Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. No, I don't remember ever seeing that. Heard of it, don't remember seeing it. Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Did you say Buck Rogers? Wow, Buck Rogers. Man, I love Buck Rogers. I forgot about that. It, that was one of my favourite all-time shows. Uh, There's a lot of all-time great shows. I remember I drew, I spent about three hours drawing Buck Rogers. I think we all had chicken pox at the time. So I was snowing outside. I was lying on the floor. That's in the days where I could, well, not just draw, but also get up off the floor uh, safely. Um, without a crane so Buck Rogers I drew him and he had his had his white um, costume on and stuff I think he was holding his helmet had his helmet in his hand and I took the picture I, I, I drew the picture I spent ages. I don't know if I coloured it in or not. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I think I'm sure my brother said. I think his helmet's white, isn't it? Why have you done it red? I'm like, I don't worry about it. Um, it's like, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter what what colour his jeans are, what colour his shoes are, and so yeah. But the picture's there. It's got the colours. It's in colour. It's looking looking magazine. It was. So okay. Anyway, um, so I took it to my stepmom, showed it to her, I was so proud. And she was really good at drawing, like really good. And she said, who is that? I said, guess. Bearing in mind, Buck Rogers was our favourite show. At the, mo at the time, it was on TV, it was really big. She said, oh, was it Elvis? I've never been so angry. Never spoke to her again. Street, street, streets of San Francisco, the Flintstone Comedy Hour. Now, I remember the Flintstones. Oh, we're the Flintstone, yeah, there. Yeah. We're the Flintstone the Comedy. Hey, hey, we're the Flintstone, the Flintstone. I remember the introduction because it always used to be, it'd be chucking the, the um, dinosaur outside, and eventually he got kicked out, didn't he? At this, yeah. I used to watch that. I used to be on a Saturday evening about five o'clock for about half an hour or twenty minutes. Monty Python's Flying Circus, Circus rather. No, I never got to see that when it was on. First of all, I seen it. I didn't get to see that till probably oh, late eighties when they were showing repeats. Night Gallery. Nope, never heard of that one. Dean Martin Show. Never saw that. Seen clips on YouTube. Of course, I know who Dean Martin is. The ABC Sunday Night Movie. I don't know. I don't think we had that here because we didn't have ABC. Land of the Lost. I don't know about that. Beretta. Eight is enough. Hong Kong Fui. Or Hong Kong Pui. Um, yeah. Probably wouldn't be allowed on TV now. But... It was a kung fu dog, and it used to be on. If I remember rightly, it would it was on Saturday mornings with a cartoon section, and it's very popular. And he used to go and change in a filing cabinet, so he'd he'd jump into one filing cabinet drawer and he'd come out another one, and he'd be dressed all in his Hong Kong pui. Um, costume with his mask on and his uh, gi you know stuff Flip Wilson show never saw that but Flip Wilson great comedian great comedian another hero of uh, Richard Pryor as well I never saw it though uh, I might have had one of his albums I'm not sure The Sunny and Cher Homily Hour nope I've seen clips of that I think over the years McLeod. I used to watch McLeod. 
but again probably in the 90s sort of or in the 80s or something like I can't remember much about it but I do remember I remember the name uh, ABC okay that's no good here's Lucy don't remember that Barnaby Jones nope Ironside I remember Ironside seeing it didn't he do two didn't he do two two different shows Ironside and then he did another one where he played just gave it a different name I don't remember so McMillan the new Scooby Doo Faulty Towers this is interesting because this is American TV shows but Faulty Towers comes up which was an English show so you're telling me the most popular shows in America there's only one from the UK and that's Faulty Towers um, I didn't discover Faulty Towers until um, probably early 80s and still at that time the funniest thing I'd ever seen funniest TV show uh, Chico and the Man I don't, never saw that I know who's in it uh, Freddie Prince I know very much about Freddie Prince and Freddie Prince Jr. is uh, his son wasn't it a comedian um, Freddie Prince was a big star in America uh, for his short life um, Roots never never saw Roots Mannix never saw that Speedy Buggy I don't remember What's Happening I don't remember that one either Josie and the Pussycats nope the images look very much like Scooby Doo characters Canon yep I used to watch Canon is that the same bloke that was in a different show as well? I don't know. Space 1999. Love that show. Loved it. I don't remember when that used to be on, but I used to love watching it. Um, great, great, really good. Just, um, but that was American. Again, these all American Maud, don't remember Maud. Mob Squad, don't remember that. Facts of Life, nope. Monday Night Football, no, because we didn't. The Midnight Special, no. What's that? The Wolfman Jack, I've heard of him. Police Women, nope. Return to Planet of the Apes. Was that a TV show, was it? Animation, oh, I don't remember that. SWAT, Yogi's Gang. I probably did see Yogi's Gang. Yeah, I did, but that would be on a Saturday morning with the with the cartoons. Trapper John MD. Nope, don't remember seeing that. 2020. Nope. Donnie and Mary. Nope, that was Donnie as the Osmonds, but I didn't see that. I don't remember. The New Adventures of Batman. It was a cartoon, so I probably would have watched that on a Saturday morning as well. NBC mystery movie no Rhoda no I don't remember that Marcus Welby nope Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels I remember Captain Caveman because he used to shout Captain Caveman and the girls would say and the Teen Angels no, they didn't. But it was Captain K. Captain K. Man. So that used to be on a Saturday morning as well, I think. The All New Super Friends Hour. I don't know that one. Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo. I mean, I remember Scrappy Doo. Blimey. I felt sorry for Scooby, Scooby Doo because Scrappy Doo became a star. I don't care what anyone says. You can argue all day long. Scrappy Doo was the star of that show. As soon as Scrappy Doo became part of the show, he was a star. That's it. Simple as. Because you got like, what do you remember? Okay, Scooby Doo Doo. Okay, we remember that. You know, anyone around at that time remember that. But what about if I said what if I said? Uh, okay, it's not a good example. Because if I said, let me at him, let me at him. 
you'd say Scrappy Doo. But Scooby Doo, his catchphrase was Scooby Doo. So if Scrappy Doo's catchphrase was Scrappy Doo, Scrappy Scrappy Doo, or Let Me At Him, Let Me At Him, I'm Scrappy Doo. He didn't need to have his name in the catchphrase. But then you could say, well, Scooby Doo's also got the. So, that, you know, I guess he did have a few sounds. Doctor Who makes it in America. Well, that's good. It was 114. So there's two British TV shows in, in the American top 150. Uh, Lou Grant. I remember seeing that a bit. Mighty Mouse. Of course I watched Mighty Mouse. And Jekyll, Heckle and Jekyll. I don't remember Heckle and Jekyll, but I remember Mighty Mouse. Du -du 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 -du. Mighty Mouse. Uh, that used to be on in the afternoons, like after school time, for in the early 80s in this country. Don't remember it being around before that. Maybe it was on during the Saturday mornings. Then you got the White Shower. Shadow, rather. I don't remember that. NBC. Room 222. That looks intriguing, but... Uh, I don't know what that was. The show was for... It doesn't say anything about what it was about. Okay. It rings a bell. I don't know why. Dick Van Dyke show, don't remember seeing that. When I mean, that was like the 50s, when it was 71. Star Trek the Animated Series, I don't remember that. Isn't that interesting? The voices were from the actual Star Trek people. The original Captain Kirk, Spock and uh, Doc. They were the same people. Harlem Go Globe Trotters, Trotters, that used to be Saturday evening, early evening, and they do all these tricks because they're about eight, nine foot tall, all of them, and it was just something. It's probably more in, not more interesting, because baseball, not base basketball, is never a big a, a thing in the UK, really, not not a big sport like on TV or anything. But watching them do what they did was just, you know, I mean, everyone had like basketball, netball at school. It was a thing, but it just wasn't a big sport here. Um, but it was amazing to see them do what they did. Has the fall guy been on it yet? I don't think it has, has it? Jabber Jaw. So you're telling me the great, great ape show is ahead of the fall guy? doesn't make sense FBI the FBI Archie Bunker's place the man from Atlantis oh man I was thinking about that the other day it says Bobby Ewan from Dallas before he was Bobby Ewan he was the man from Atlantis great show absolutely brilliant loved it used to be on a Saturday evening as well not before Dallas, because Dallas hadn't started yet. He hadn't moved to Dallas yet. Scooby's All Star, I don't know. How the West Was Won. Is that a TV show? Mayberry F. The Ropers. Shazam. See, I didn't know that that was a show. But it was. That was a show. Like Shazam, Shazam is like a movie, isn't it? It's been a couple now. Uh, but Shazam was actually a TV show, blimey. 1974 The Invisible Man yep I used to watch that David McCullum although he was American but he was English wasn't he David McCullum The Rookies don't remember that Doris Day Show Medical Center New Adventures of Gilligan All New Popeye Hour I wouldn't be able to tell you because I've watched a lot of Popeye shows Pebbles and Bam Bam Show really? Pebbles and Bam Bam. Did they were they really able to make a TV show 
from the kids. I don't remember that. Nanny and the Professor, Knott's Landing. That's the one I was trying to think of. Because we had Falcon's Crest, Dallas, Dynasty, Knott's Landing. That's the four. Um, I'm sure it was... Yeah, it was a spin-off from Dallas, yeah, I guess. Don Genie. Genie, that's an animated thing. The World's Greatest Super Friends. I missed out on that. I don't remember there being that being a thing. Rich Man, Poor Man. Oh, no. Don't remember that one. Laugh Olympics. Uh, nope, don't remember that. Family. Nope. I, Claudius. I think I might have seen I, Claudius. I think I might have done. Load more. Okay, load more. I just realised, what about the Hulk? Have we, have we mentioned the Hulk? The Brady Bunch, Ellery Green, Blake Seven. So in America, you got Blake Seven. That was big here. But it used to be on midweek. <clears throat> Midweekish kind of time. Um, yeah, I really like that. Then came Bronson. Then came Bronson. Wow, that's so weird. Is it was it based on Charles Bronson? That's weird. I mean, the bloke in the picture looks a bit like Charles Bronson. Phyllis. Upstairs, downstairs. See? This just shows you... There's 156. But it just shows you the... No, Vinny? Calm yourself down. You know Dalton Abbey? Dalton, is it Dalton Abbey? Upton Abbey, whatever. That... I've had this little conversation with someone before. They said, no, it's not. But it is. Hey, shut up. Calm down. Good boy. Calm yourself down. Um, is it up to Nebby? The other really popular TV show on Netflix, I think it is. Well, Upstairs, Downstairs was the precursor to that, as far as I'm concerned. It was about a bunch of, like, a, in a huge stately home and... It's, you know, look, all these people living and looking after these rich people. I mean, Downton Abbey, that's it, Downton Abbey. Isn't that what Downton Abbey is, really? So, next up. Okay, so that's it. So, they didn't have the fall guy. No. Oh. It's saying here... This, the best sitcoms, best sitcoms of the seventies, all in the family. So, Happy Days. A lot of them have already been seen. So, I'm not gonna go through it again. Blimey. I used to love I Dream of Genie, but I also used to love Bewitched as well, which I always found them to be of a similar quality. Um, in a sense, you know, it was the same setup, wasn't it? One was a witch, one was a genie, but then it was the bloke that they were with that was always like, "Well, don't we don't want anyone to find out that you're a witch or a genie," and he was like straight laced, and she, the witch, the either the witch or the genie, were like really bubbly and you know exuberant, if that's a word. Huh. Shh, you fucking... It's enough now, okay? Okay? Right. I clap my hands every time that he barks. I clap my hands so I know when to edit. I'm sure people in, who can hear outside think I'm slapping him or something, which I'm not, obviously. Vinny, calm down, mate. He just keeps barking. So, I'm going to go. It's Q&A Friday tomorrow. So, I still need some questions from you, if you're still awake, to post them on my 
uh, Facebook page, Jason's Boring Group. But I'll post another thing tomorrow just to remind people. Maybe I'll do that tonight. So thanks for listening. Please remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love.